Hello you absolute legends and welcome to Create Ink. In this video we will see how we can make color lithophanes. If you have seen color lithophanes before, they generally have a colored image printed and then pasted at the back. But this is going to be very different from that. We are going to do everything on our 3D printer using a multi-material unit. If you are interested in understanding the theory and principles behind how color lithophanes work, please watch this video. At the end of this video, I'd show you a tutorial on how you can make one yourself. If you are only interested in the tutorial, the time code is in the description. You can click and skip on right ahead. But if you are interested in understanding how color lithophanes work, we dip our toes slightly into the realms of philosophy, biology and physics and move to the explainer table. Color, does it really even exist? Now, if this were a philosophy video, we'd be here talking about it for another 20 minutes, 20 years or maybe even 20 centuries, but it isn't, so relax, it's a lucky day. For our purposes, color cannot exist without an observer, and that observer being us. See, what we perceive as color is a series of very complex physical and neurochemical processes that are interacting with each other. Or uh, to simplify it, on the face of it, Every light has a wavelength and we perceive different wavelengths as having a different color. Now, onto the biology side of things. This is the structure of our eye and this right here is the retina. As you can see highlighted here, we have cone cells in our retina. They are primarily of three different types that detect three different types of color. Red, green and blue. What this means for us is that any color we can see can be represented as a mixture of red, green and blue colors. That's why we refer to colored lights as RGB lights. When equal amounts of blue and red cones are stimulated, we see the color magenta. When equal amounts of the red and green cones are activated, we see the color yellow. When equal amounts of all three cones are stimulated, we see the color white. Does that mean mixing red, green and blue should give us white? It actually does. Now I know what some of you are wondering. Mixing red, green and blue watercolor does not make white. You know that from experience and of course you're right about it. So hold that thought for just a minute and we would get back to this. On the physics side of things, let's say we have an object, we have our observer and white light is falling on the object. White light here can be represented in its three components, red, green and blue. If our object absorbs most of the green and blue component and reflects the red part, it would appear to be red to our eyes. And that's basically how we perceive color. And now we can go back to the question that we just left hanging a second ago. If you take red, green and blue watercolor and mix them together, you won't get white. But a combination of red, green and blue light would be perceived as white by us. The keyword here being light. Imagine three different flashlights, one of each color, red, green, and blue. If you shine them at a single point, the color you get is white. But remember, three different flashlights, three different colors shining at a single point. This is called additive color. You're adding the red, green, and blue components to each other. Now let's Imagine what happens if you have only a single source of white light. You cannot add parts to it. You can only take away parts from it. You can take away the red part. It becomes cyan. You can take away the blue part. It becomes yellow. Let's take some red pigment and some green pigment. We already know when white light is shining on them, they would absorb and reflect different RGB components. They are also shown here on your screen. Now what happens if I drop this green pigment into my red pigment? We have essentially subtracted all three RGB components from our white light and the resulting color would be a dull nearly black color. That's what you get when you mix red and green watercolor. So to deal with this, we need a subtractive system instead of an additive system. When we have a single source of light, we have to come up with a subtractive system for color. This conveniently brings us from RGB to CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. Again, subtractive system, single source of white light. Cyan here blocks out the red component, 
magenta blocks out green and yellow blocks out the blue component. By varying each of these sliders and the intensity of our source, we can get any shade we want. And for our purposes, we control the intensity of our source by putting a white sheet in front of it. And this is basically how our colored lithophane works as well. Different thicknesses of four different filaments, cyan, magenta, yellow and white are laid at different points. And when you shine a light behind it, you get different colors at different points. The process for making a colored lithophane is fairly simple. You go to this website, I would put the link in the description as well. You upload any picture of your choice. For this video, I have chosen this Iron Man image. So that's the image right here that we can see. Uh, there are various parameters. I would recommend that you leave most of them at default. I only change this one, the mm per pixel property that is here. Choose the palette of filaments that you have. Uh, I'm using unbranded cyan, magenta, yellow and white filaments. So I'd go with printed solid CMYK. Type your email address and just click on create STL. As a result, you'd get a zip file containing various STLs. Let's go ahead, extract it. So inside the zip file, you'd find five STLs, one for each of cyan, magenta, and yellow, and two for white, one on the bottom and one on the top for white. So let's import these into our slicer. I use Prusa slicer. Switch to MMU. Take all five of these into our slicer. Multipart object detected, click yes. And there you have it. Let's change a few settings. Uh, cyan is one on my printer, magenta is two, white is four. Let's change this to four, four and yellow is three. You can optionally go ahead and change the colors of the filaments here. This does not have any effect on the print itself. It's just for you to be able to see it in the slicer itself. Please remember to keep the layer height same in both the slicer and the website. You had entered it here. 0.1 mm is what I recommend. I've been doing all my prints on 0.1 mm and I've been getting very good results. So let's just go ahead, slice it. If you want to resize the model, uh, feel free to resize it in the X and Y dimensions as much as you want. Just leave the Z height alone because Z height is what affects the colors at the end. So please do not uh, mess with the Z height. You can do whatever you want with the X and Y dimensions. After exporting the G code, you can transfer it to your printer using Octoprint or SD card or whatever you prefer. Just print it out and then we can see the results. I particularly chose this picture of Iron Man because I wanted to see how well the skin tones turn out in the final result. And to be honest, I am quite happy with it. I could not have asked for a better result. So that brings us to the end of this video. And any video that tries to explain a topic in a few minutes would always leave unanswered questions. For example, why most applications that use CMYK use black as the key color instead of the white that we used. I would leave it up to you to figure out why that is. 
And if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, the other one works fine. Hit subscribe for more such content. Leave your input in the comment section down below. And until next time, just keep building.